Greetings, technicians. It's Admin Crow here, your coach of the Toronto Star Raptors, bringing you Week One battle versus the Toronto Maple Leafians, the other Torontonian team, coached by Logan, aka Lofi. So I'm just gonna be doing a postcon, cause、um, in the actual、uh, live commentary, I end up、uh, doing a fun group chat with friends. So I didn't really get a chance to record. I'm doing this entire thing after. So I guess this is a better,、um, better interpretation of the match because I get to、uh, slow down and pause the video, explain my thought process, and so on and so forth. So let's just get started.、Um, and hit the play button.、Um, so actually. Going into the match, right?、Um, looking at his team, I expected everything、um, except for the S Cavalier, or should I say, I prepped for everything but the S Cavalier. I'm surprised that he didn't bring、um, both of his fairies, but it does make sense.、Um, after I talked to him、uh, after the battle,、um, he says that because all three of my tier one picks, those being the Coco Celestella and Kieran Black, destroys both of his fairies. That was the reason that、um, he didn't bring it. And at first glance, I also don't see Scrafty. That's good because he doesn't really have a good reason.、Uh, I mean, a good way to beat P2 effectively. Now that he he doesn't have Scrafty,、um, so I'm just gonna start the match. All right. So first of all, he led with as Cavalier.、Um, that's not something I prepped for, like I mentioned before. Um, but I decided to lead with Clayto anyways, just in case he decides to、uh, lead Seismetode or the Jirachi. I am packing a Rocky Helmet for the Jirachi and、um, uh, the Grass Knot also for the Seismetode. Also the Dazzling Gleam for the Scrafty, which he didn't bring. This is one of the reasons why I led Clayto,、uh, because the fact that he doesn't have Scrafty,、uh, the usefulness or I guess the overall.、Um, Reason to、uh, bring, I mean, to have Claydol as a like an anti-check or a counter of some sort、um, for Scrafty is gone, so it's more expendable. And of course, I want to get up my rocks as soon as I can. So he he led with his Cavalier, right? That's not something I expected. So even though over here in turn one, I just go straight up for my rocks because、uh, I know I take any hit,、uh, any hit, even a Mega Horn. That knockoff actually did a lot.、Uh, I do lose my Rocky helmet right here,、um, but I I also get up、uh, my rocks successfully.、Uh, I do see that he's packing leftovers, so、uh, that's good because I know that it's not an assault vest set. My Kieran Black can at least do some damage back.、Um, so right now I just switch into my Celestia, knowing that he's、uh, two other moves. Are probably、uh, dual stab and knockoff is not gonna work against me because I have my Z crystal. He's gonna show the protect here to scout out my fire move, which I do go for、uh, the flame thrower. And over here, I believe he switched out. Yep. Yes.、Um, I did go into my Kieran Black expecting him to switch out, so I pulled an offensive double because、um, I know that、uh, there's no way staying in、uh, seeing after seeing the flame thrower. So he did go into his rodent wash. I think I end up getting a sub here. He knows that I have the terrible ability and very well maybe packing for、uh, packing the Earth Power for the Rotom. So that's why he went into his Frogger,、uh, which is a Seismetold. I did I do successfully get up a sub right here. So right now I'm just gonna go for an Ice Beam of my own.、Uh, try to gauge what set,、uh, what type of set this Seismetold is.、Uh, I do get a freeze here, but it didn't matter. He didn't even go for the Skull. He just straight up break out. I start out and go for the earthquake. It broke my sub. Okay, over here is where I got a little bit scared because I did EV my Kieran Black, as I mentioned in my team builder. If you guys haven't seen that, you should check it out in the link down below.、Um, to take both Earth Power and Earthquake, which are two of the, I guess,、uh, the hardest moves that、um, I can expect from a Seismetold,、uh, to not be able to break my sub. So I was like, okay, I see leftover. So this thing is probably defensive. Is it max HP, max attack with leftover or something? 
So I actually got a little bit scared, but I think I still stayed in, uh, go for a second ice beam because I know that I outspeed, I can just knock him out if he, so he decide to stay in. He does go into his ass cavalier here, uh, that only did 20%. <laughs> Um, so I go uh, go back again to Celesteela because I don't want any of my mons to get knocked off. Um, this time he go for the Iron Head, that did around 18%. So I know I can take a couple more of these. Uh, this time I just go for the straight Flamethrower again. Um, I got a burn on the Rotom. I don't know if this mattered in the long run. We'll see in a little bit here. Um, Obviously, the point of me going for flamethrower wasn't trying to get the burn, but it doesn't uh, end up canceling out his leftovers. So, which, uh, which I guess it is nice um, in terms of wearing down his uh, only defogger at this point. So I go back into Kieran Black again because it is a dedicated switching to this Rotom. Um, I'm not pack packing any physical attack, so I'm not afraid of the Will O Wisp. Uh, so it's basically the same situation again. I get up a sub once again against this Rotom. Um, right now he doesn't know that I have Roost, which I believe I do show right here. Yep. After he goes for an Iron Hand just to break my sub, and there's no way that I'm staying in. Uh, uh, again, I believe I go into my Celesteela right here to take another potential Iron Hand. Yep, that did another 20%. So right now I'm at a point where I can't uh, just go straight Celesteela every single time on this as Cavalier. And uh, I just go straight for the Flamethrower, try to start him out. Um, even because I know that he can't do anything to me, even if he stay in. Um, he does make the obvious play go back into his Rotom. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that you guys probably already saw uh, the last time the Rotom came in, he did manage to get off a Defog on the Switch, uh, on my Switch. Um, to get rid of the rocks that I set up initially. Uh, I think, yeah, at this point, uh, I can't be switching in my Celesteela uh, too many more times against that um, Cavalier. And plus, Celesteela being one of my most uh, important win cons, this is not really going well for me. However, the Rotom is getting worn down. It's down to about 50%. Um, so for the third time, I go back into my Kieran Black. This time he goes for the Vol Switch, opting for momentum. It's just overall a better play because um, it hits the Celesteela as well. And he does go into his Jirachi right here. I decide to sack my uh, Claydol. But as you can see, because my investment that I don't actually didn't do a lot, so I can afford to go back to, to my P2 to see if um, this Jirachi is in, in fact a choice card or not. As you can see, he does switch out right here. Um, so leave me believe that the Jirachi is choice, choice in some ways. Engaging from that uh, damage on both the P2 and the Claydol, I believe that it is actually choice Scarf just based off the way he played. He does go into Amoongus here um, on my foul play from the P2. Uh, I am packing a foul play just for the Jirachi um, on my P2 instead of uh, the Bobin Courage that I initially wanted to go with. Uh, so we can see that the Amoongus actually didn't take that foul play very well, which is kind of weird. I guess 15% is not a lot, but that was uh, surprising on Amoongus, I guess. Anyways, so right here, I don't want to get toxic right now, uh, so I just go into my Claydol, decide to stack it once again, and again, I lived! <laughs> he went for Hidden Power! If he gone for any other move, I probably would have died, even a Poison type move. Uh, despite the fact that I, uh, um, I was uh, resisted to poison, I think uh, he probably went for the hidden power fire, expecting a Celesteela. Um, I, I think that itself might be a questionable play. Um, obviously, a Celesteela is a pretty sw a safe switching against Luigi, the Amoongus. However, it is so low to a point where I want to uh, preserve as one of my win cons, especially switching into that as Cavalier as well. So again, I try to sack my Clado, but it lived. So this is good. I end up getting my rocks uh, instead of going for a Psychic, which I don't even have. So I guess he just stay in, knowing that Amoongus can take any hits anyways, even if I go for a super effective move. So I just uh, got off my rocks and sack my Clado, go into my KB, try to scare him out. And I believe again right here, I go for another sub. I don't know how many subs this is, but uh, because 
because he has so many subtle walls for me to take advantage of it, I can get up myself so many times so easily. And uh, this time, I think I misclicked Ice Beam. For some reason, I was talking in the chat, and for some reason, I thought Ice Beam was neutral damage against Escavity. Of, of course, it wasn't. Um, as you can see, that did absolutely nothing. That's 22%. Actually, that, that wasn't bad. But, uh, and uh, he so decided to go for Iron Hand to break my sub once again. Um, right here, I'm forced to switch out, go back into my P2 because I really have no switching for this. Um, he does go for another Iron Head, tries to pick up the KO on my KB. Uh, right here, I just stayed in uh, and go for the foul play, I believe. Uh, he's probably going to go for the knockoff. There's no way I'm going into my Celestia again. I don't want it to take any more damage um, because it is one of my main wing cogs. Oh, never mind. I do go into my Celesteela, expecting a knockoff. Uh, but I believe I'm going to go back to the P2 now. Oh no. Okay, okay. I guess okay. I messed up. Um, so I think my thought process over there was um, I went into Celesteela expecting a knockoff, just to, so that I can get momentum. If um, I'll get momentum one more time because I know from the HP that I was at. I can still take uh, any one hit even after the knockoff uh, from the Amoongus or the uh, S Cavalier because if he goes for the knockoff right there, uh, it would have done less than 20%, which is outside of Iron Hair range, which is like the best move the S Cavalier can hit me with. So I know for a fact that I can still set up on those two. So that's why I felt comfortable going to my Celestia for the one last time. Okay, over here, this is a turning point of the game, I believe. Yes, so over here, okay, first of all, I went for the Air Slash, uh, expecting him to go Rotom, so I want some more damage on it. Uh, in, uh, that's why I went for the Air Slash over the Flamethrower. Um, had he stayed in, uh, it didn't matter, but uh, his Cavalier can do, uh, can't really do too much to me anyways. So over here, I believe, on the following turn, I actually went for an autonomize, expecting him to expect me to either switch out or uh, go for a defog. So, like his play is basically vol switch or defog, right? Um, if he expects me to switch out, he should go for the vol switch. But his overall better play is to click defog right here because his Rotom is very worn down, and I lost my rocker already. So once uh, he uh, go for the defog he will be able to remove the hazard from his side forever. Um, so I took a gamble here and go for the Autonomize. The, re the main reason being that I want to be able to force in the Jirachi if he is Scarfed. Because right now at this point, I don't know if he's Scarfed or not uh, for sure yet. But from the way he's been playing the Jirachi, it seems like it's choice in some way, but I want to confirm that. So. Um, instead of going for an attack here, I actually go for the Autonomize. Um, one of the other reasons I did this is because I don't know if I outspeed 100%. Like, I don't know if I 100% outspeed the Rotom because I sent my Celesteela to outrun uh, Togekiss and uh, Mega Alteria, which both has the base speed of 80 um, at plus one. I don't know how fast I am, like, naturally. Um, like without the plus two basically, right? So I want to be able to get off damage the following turn. Okay, anyways, so right here, he takes a little bit of burn damage and I, you can see over here, I'm actually faster than the Rotom. And he does go for the defog like I expected. And over here, I had no choice because with the set I was running, I had no way to touch the Rotom. So I actually end up going for the Z fire right here instead of saving it for the Jirachi. So he does send in his Jirachi. Uh, it took him really long time to make this move. So the way he sent it in tells me that it might not actually be Scarf, but you guys can see here, he does outspeed me and go for the Thunder Punch. And um, yeah, I expect my Celestia to go down here just for valuable information, finding out that his Jirachi is indeed Scarfed. However, I lived on fucking 2% because of my HP investment. Um, that, that's amazing. So not only I get to find out this, uh, I almost said Celesteela. 
um, this Jirachi is scarfed, but also I get a big hit off a plus one flamethrower that did about a juicy 78%, so that's good. So over here, I can actually afford to save my Celesteela, knowing that the Jirachi is scarfed and there's no hazards up on my side of the field. So I go into P2 once again, and uh, I take this Thunder Punch, it literally did 12. <laughs> so knowing that uh, the Jirachi is gonna switch out here because the fact that he is indeed scarfed, um, I can go for a safe recovery. He does go into the Amoongus right here. Uh, I believe, oh yeah, because I didn't want any of my mons to get potentially toxic, so I was actually forced in, uh, forced to stay in with the P2. Over here, <laughs> I literally said in the chat that I'm just gonna stay in and go for the memes. <laughs> um, because I have the Serene Grace, so I just uh, went for trial attack for fun. Uh, even though I know it's not going to do too much to the Amoongus. At this point, I'm just pretty much hoping for a status or um, wait for Logan to make a move of his own because I don't want to be the one who switches right here. And as you can see, I do get a crit freeze. It actually didn't matter all that much. Uh, it's, it's, it's funny because it, this is the second freeze I got, I've gotten this game, but that last one was actually in my favor to freeze because of Serene Grace. I do go into my Kirin Black here, uh, try to... <laughs> oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, I remember what happened here. Um, it was funny because uh, I actually disconnected after I got the freeze. And uh, that was because it's freezing rain here uh, in Toronto and I actually got a <laughs> power shortage. So I end up hopping on my phone and join, rejoin the battle and uh, rejoin Discord as well. Um, <laughs> we're talking about how funny it was. I I froze the Amoongus along alongside of the power <laughs> in my house. Anyways, uh, so my stop process was actually a little bit interrupted during the battle. Um, so I do go into my Kieran Black over here, uh, try to take advantage of the freeze. But of course, he get that turn one stall again and go for the foul play, which is something that I. I didn't mention my team builder, that was the best way that Amoongus can touch my Kieran Black with. However, you guys see that it only did 22% because I am in fact running a minus attack nature with zero attack. Uh, I didn't do the calc, but it's 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 nice how uh, it doesn't actually break my sub. So over here, I should be in a decent situation because I can just roost up and go for sub again as long as he's not packing the toxic and for some reason stays in against my Kieran Black thinking that he can survive a uh, uh, ice beam or something. So right here, he does go into a scavalier once again as I go for the roost. Uh, I'm forced out once again. Uh, I believe this is where I go into the P2. Yes because I don't really have a switch into the uh, Escavalier and uh, because I do trace the Overcoat wait, it's Overcoat oh actually never mind, Overcoat doesn't do anything uh, and I do I do leave uh, lose my Evil Light right here to the knockoff because uh, I didn't want to lose uh, my items on anything else as he goes for the second Iron Head did around 35% I, can, I go for another Fire Play because I do outspeed him um, Oh, thank God, Rip Ducky. Um, I do outspeed him. Um, even with the leftover, I believe that this is a winning battle for me. So that's why I just go straight for the foul play and thinking that I can recover off the damage. Uh, because the Iron Head only did 35, I know that for sure I can live the next one. And over here, but no, <laughs> he busts out a Mega Horn, which is something I should be expecting considering he haven't showed the last move. So I lose my P2. But it is okay here. I go into my 2% Celesteela once again, forcing him out with a flamethrower, which I didn't go for. I actually gone for Autonomize again <laughs> on uh, <laughs> such a risky, I, I guess, situation, similar to the last time when I set up my Autonomize because I know for a fact that he's going to be switching. I don't know which mod I'm into, but uh, I just know that he's going to be uh, switching for sure. Um, right now, I'm down two mons. Both of my walls are gone. My Celesteela is pretty much gone. He only lost his Rodon Wash. And uh, right now, I get to find out whether if this uh, 
actually this trying to lure it also has a base speed of 80 so I, I wouldn't know if it's scarfed or not but this is just to guarantee damage on whatever coming in so I can outspeed um, so right here I just went straight for the air slash and did a solid 54% so I know this is not bulky I don't know why this will be bulky but I pretty much lost my counter to the chandelure so I just go into a sharpedo right here try to force him out I didn't mega evolve I just straight up go for the crunch uh, because that knocks it out anyways so he goes into his frogger try to sack that thing I go for a second crunch right here knowing that he doesn't really have any safe switching so sharpedo gets his first kill uh, I do get plus two speed so uh, there's really isn't anything he can switch into aside from as cavalier as he goes into uh, Third cable I switch out for uh, which which forced me out of my shark I made an offensive double into Coco hoping that he doesn't go for the knockoff uh, Because I was in with my mega uh, He does go for the protect which fails it he buys him a little bit more HP um, So right here, I know that he's gonna be going into uh, he's Amoongus because I know for a fact that he brought that thing spe specifically for the Coco as I mentioned in my team builder so I'm just gonna hit him up with a vote switch uh, expecting a switch out so I can gain some more momentum over here for the first time I go into my Kieran Black uh, the reason I say first time because I believe there's a situation like this exactly again later on um, where I didn't go KB uh, so this time I get up another sub against the Amoongus and okay for for the second time around i didn't make the same mistake click ice beam so i go for the earth's power did about 33 percent uh he's at 33 percent right now so i don't feel comfortable going for another one especially after leftovers so i am forced out into coco once again um thank god he didn't go for knockoff i don't want to lose my scarf yet i do i did bring scarf coco specifically for the scarf jirachi and um, that Iron Head didn't do as much because of my HP investment. Uh, my better play here is always go for the bow switch, no matter what his play is. Um, the first time he protected, the second time he does go into Amoongus once again. That is six, literally six. Um, so I double out into my, uh, I switch into my Shark, uh, just going for a crunch right here. Uh, because my thought process was because I wasn't expecting a switch. Uh, but even if I did expect a switch, I wasn't expecting a chandelure. My thought process was um, a crunch will do a decent chunk to Amoongus anyways because I don't feel comfortable going for the Psychic Fang um, in case he goes into Jirachi or something. Um, and uh, if he does go into the Ask uh, his Cavalier play, um, I will be getting off more damage with the crunch. Uh, but he so decided to sack his uh, chandelure first, which is smart move that gives him not only regenerator back on the Amoongus back to full uh, So potentially he can live a strong jar boosted psychic thing And uh, a free switch into his Escavalier right here As you can see right now Oh, he oh, yeah, this was uh, kind of weird uh, In my end he didn't actually go uh, it's Cavalier, he went back into Amoongus so this time I choose to Mega Evolve because I got my initial turn of speed boost so I already know that I'll speed his Jirachi and just straight up go for the Psychic Fang I think he he was probably doing calcs uh, knowing that he's not gonna live a Psychic Fang due to his invest investment the first time that's why he made a switch out to get back to fall so he has a chance to live it So, but however over here you do see that it's not even a crit, I just straight up knock him out. So he must be fully special defensive or something, which does make sense to take on the Coco. Uh, later I find out that he was AV, but the match is pretty much over at this point. I was underestimating the power of Strong Jar boosted Sharp Sharpedo. I didn't even need the Scarf Coco. As you can see over here, I just straight up go for the Crunch. It did a solid 56% knockout the S Cavalier and just proceed to knock out the Jirachi with another Crunch. That's it. Uh, so even though my P2's trace didn't really put in work, I was expecting him to bring the Mega Altaria and Scrafty so I can trace that pixelate boosted try attack. Um, I guess better luck next time. And uh, GG to my good friend Logan. Uh, it was a really fun battle overall. 
So if you guys enjoy this battle, make sure you to leave some suggestions down below. Uh, if not, I guess I'll see you guys in the next one, the week two team builder for the TDL. Peace out, technicians.